Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. So on my last video, the one that was published just before this one is will be published. I showed you how to do a small vent. Can you just show them up there? That vent is the same size and style as the one I wallpapered in the previous video. When you're wallpapering vents, the hardest wallpaper with which to cover a vent is grass cloth. It doesn't bend, it fights back. If you're using paper, some of the rules change in your favor. It's a lot easier. So this is the vent. This is the clunker through which you access you know, your, your air filter. So that's what we're doing. So I began it off video, and, and I'll tell you what I did. I, I put the vent down on the grass cloth, and I got a general shape to it, and I bent it. And I made my cuts around the little mechanical gadgets that open and close. Just cut them so that the wallpaper will go against the inside. Now you notice that I painted the vent. So I went and I matched the color and I painted all of the important areas because if a dot is showing white, you got to color it in. Okay, now this is a lot easier than the last one, believe it or not. So the first thing we're going to do is attach the wallpaper to the fascia. And the fascia is all of this flat area. So once you attach it, there's no going back. If you mess this up, you almost have to throw out the vent and get your customer a new vent. Because it's just not worth the time to get crazy glue and wallpaper off of the vent. So, with that in mind, let's do it. So I'm using Loctite super glue. Okay. And I'm gonna work quickly. And you, you have, you have a few seconds. I'd say you have up to 30 seconds before it becomes impossible to, to call it dry, okay? So I'm gonna do all of the flat. You don't have to cover every square centimeter, but I'm generally, I'm just going to drizzle it, okay? So I'm gonna to try to do it quickly. Let me just, let me just put the camera here, please. Okay, I'm gonna put a nice amount. I got a lot of these bottles of glue. Mm, running that down. I'm making it thick because the thicker it is, the less inclined it's going to dry quickly. So it's one of the reasons I'm using a lot. Mm. Okay, she's still wet. Oh, mister. Okay, I think I'll give it a look over because you don't want to miss anything. Okay. We're good. Now, let's push this down. Okay. 
Now you notice I didn't glue the fins. I did that on purpose. Now the backing on brass cloth is all just paper. This is stuck to it, I already know. show them what I mean by trim that right up against that mechanical hinge now here's the thing about this you want to get your glue right on this edge right on and I'm using a lot because that glue needs to stick onto that corner. Okay. Pushing it down against that corner. You can see it's not easy to work with. Okay, I'm going to use anything. Push that down. I want that wallpaper in that groove. Getting the tightness that I want. So let me just glue it off camera and I'll see you on the next frame. So I took the vent and continued to push down on all of the flaps. And I used something to push this tough wallpaper into this groove all around. So what I'm left with is the wallpaper on the front, just like that. All I have to do now, keeping in mind that the wallpaper should be completely attached to the whole fascia, you know, the flat parts. If that's true, then all I have to do is cut the spaces in between the fins. The way you're going to cut it now is to put it facing the back facing you so that you can cut the individual areas so that the wallpaper can then flap up onto each blade. I'll call these blades or fins. My wallpaper on the wall is hung like this with the grain going this way this vent is hung on the wall just as you see it in this video up and down not side to side that's something you would want to take into account when you cut these things so we're going to turn it around and here's what we're going to do 
We're going to get some space between this and the wall so that we can cut this. Okay. Now, I'm going to use each of these metal pieces as the guide against which I cut the wallpaper. I'm going to stick my knife in here, right up against this edge. And I'm going to cut it there. Now this is the important thing. Keep in mind, this wallpaper, this white, has to go this way. It's gonna go on this, okay? And so you don't want to cut it here, make it go on here. You want to cut it here so it flaps this way. I penetrate it first. This is some stubborn. You're not going to have this trouble if you're not hanging grass cloth. I'm going through, see how far my blade goes through? Because I want to make sure that I don't fall short and cut the wrong place. See, if my blade is going all the way through, it doesn't have the chance to run off. Don't rush it. At this point, it doesn't pay. Even though it may seem easy at this point, once you start rushing it, you'll pay the price. So when we turn it over, you can see each of these pieces now. Once we do a little more cutting, we'll go against those fins. Now we're going to get a little more detailed with our cut to get this wallpaper to lay down. You see, it's still attached here, so we have to make it, we have to sever this piece that's making it stay attached to the, the part of the fascia. But we're getting there, as you can see, right? I mean, even now, you have airflow, right? but we're going to perfect it. 
you can see after you get all of these spaces cleared, meaning that the blade goes through and through, you still have the sides. All of these sides and over here too, because this wallpaper is not ready to come through. It's not, you see, it's impeded by the attached sides here and there on every one of them. Let me show you the opposite side of this. All of these sides have to be cut individually. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 23, 46, get it? It's a lot of work. These white little pieces come off. It's the backing from the wallpaper. But we're almost there. Now I turn the project around in order to show you what we have to do to cut these, the rest of these individual pieces. I did one off video just to show you how it should sit. Now it's looking normal. So we need to sever most of the attachment on each side. And so I take my, my hobby knife and I make sure that I'm up against the fascia, this thing. And I slide my knife upward. Do I want to sever the whole thing? No. I want it to stay in place. Let's do another one. Now, I'm rubbing it so I make an impression so I know where my fascia is. Now, some of you may be wondering, how long will this take? Well, I think you would be surprised to know how long this vent and the other vent took a professional. I'll just say, for both of them, it's a day of work. Getting the paint, applying the paint, waiting for the paint to dry. cutting these things. But I realize it's going to add to the beauty of the, the wallpaper job. I realize that. And therefore it's worth it, you know. People want their vents covered. And this is the way you do it. You see, if I penetrate the whole thing, the thing gets loose, so you wanna be careful. You know, it doesn't, does it matter? I mean, you don't want a bunch of these falling off. 
so you want to be careful to just cut 95% of it so that it stays in place so that you can then glue it with super glue. Oh man, did you see what just happened? It's dangerous. It's better just to touch up these little pieces of backing because to get them all off, you might wind up ripping the wallpaper. It's a tedious little project, but you get the idea. It's better just to touch up these little pieces of backing because to get them all off, you might wind up ripping the wallpaper. It's a tedious little project, but you get the idea. Okay, we first took the pencil, colored in anything that's showing to the, to the eye, took the pencil. Then, in the corners in here, you're going to see the backing of the wallpaper. And so we took the fine brush, again, to keep globs of paint from going onto the surface. So we just fine-tuned it with this. But now, on the back, what remains is something that can only be seen on a very low angle. And so we want to save time here and we just, I'm going, I'm trying to get into those grooves just with anything that remains, just bringing the paint onto just the edge there. You see, save you some time. Not too much paint, because obviously you don't want it running out. You defeat the purpose of having used the finer brushes. Because there are little strings that stick out and little, little bits of backing that stick out. And that's all we're looking to do is to make them green. Okay. 
anything. This is not the part that's wallpapered, it's the other side. But I don't want that white showing. Because if it shows on the back, there's a chance it might show on a certain angle when you're walking up a staircase, whatever. Our vent will actually hang on the wall like this. Now, most of you watching this will not be using grass cloth. And so your project will be a lot easier. This is the most difficult material to cover vents. It's just the most difficult. You'll be done with your project a lot sooner than I am. Very nice. Light amount of, just light, light, light. Just want to make sure that those those edges are green. You know? So I just want to again I'm not getting the, I'm just doing the edge. It's the benefit of using the brush like this. This part is done, folks. I'll see you on the next frame.
where the oven fire is. Video me cutting this. You could do it right from there.
stand up on this chair, stop the video. Okay, we first took the pencil, colored in anything that's showing to the, to the eye. Took the pencil. Then, in the corners in here, you're going to see the backing of the wallpaper. And so we took the fine brush, again, to keep globs of paint from going onto the surface. So we just fine tuned it with this. But now on the back, what remains is something that can only be seen on a very low angle. And so we want to save time here and we just, I'm going, I'm trying to get into those grooves just with anything that remains, just bringing the paint onto just the edge there. You see, save you some time. Not too much paint, because obviously you don't want it running out. You defeat the purpose of having used the finer brushes. Because there are little strings that stick out and little, little bits of backing that stick out. And that's all we're looking to do is to make them green. This is not the part that's wallpapered, it's the other side. But I don't want that white showing. Because if it shows on the back, there's a chance it might show on a certain angle when you're walking up a staircase or whatever. Our vent will actually hang on the wall like this. Now, most of you watching this will not be using grass cloth. And so your project will be a lot easier. This is the most difficult material to cover vents. It's just the most difficult. You'll be done with your project a lot sooner than I am. Very nice. Light amount of, just light, light, light. Just want to make sure that those those edges are green. Mm -hmm. So I just want to again. I'm not getting. I'm just doing the edge. 
the benefit of using the brush like this. This part is done, folks. I'll see you on the next frame. video of my friends.
I'll keep where my hands are. Yeah, what is this? 